Um, and and it, it really, it really is representative of what's happening in the state of the industry right now. Um, one thing I think people should keep in mind is that film uh, in and of itself has always been a very techno technological medium, right? Prior to film, we had theater, which is something that you could do without a lot of technical stuff. You could just have people and an audience, and that's how we, we told our stories. But the medium of film, you know, came about with the idea of light and film and then moving frames, moving pictures, right? Which is literally why they're called movies, because the pictures make it seem like things are moving. So if we understand from that very core that the essence of our entire medium of film has always been something that has been very technology savvy, then I think it's incumbent upon us to continue to push the tradition of that media, of that industry, by always looking at the new technologies that can help us tell our stories. Specifically for me, why I'm very excited about AI is because the other thing about film is uh, uh, unlike other creative media, like books or music or dance or you know theater, film has always been very prohibitive uh, in a cost sense. Mm. So there are millions and millions of people who would love to tell their stories through film, but there's always been this huge hurdle that you've got to get through first, which is how do I get the equipment? How do I get lo locations and things like that? So the short answer to the story is I believe that AI is the beginning of giving more people the possibility to tell the kinds of stories that James Cameron would tell without having to have billions of dollars, um, which of course not everybody's going to have that kind of access, but still have big ideas, just as big ideas that we, we all would like to be able to share. Yeah, that's so exciting and inspiring. And James, let me circle on to you a little bit, and then we'll maybe talk about the individual projects that you're both working on. But James, welcome. And maybe can you tell our audience here a little bit about the Cosmic Companion and what inspired you to start using AI tools in filmmaking? Yeah, yeah certainly. First of all, it's wonderful to be here. And thank you so much for having us. Um, I think Darian hit it right on the money. It's um, what AI is able to do is to democratize filmmaking, to make it so that anyone can create good looking backgrounds, good looking characters, you know, great sound um, on, on a shoestring budget. And it's funny because, you know, he actually hit right on uh, who I was going to mention, who is James Cameron. And, you know, I mean, he blew just incredible amounts of money, uh, spent incredible amounts of money just trying to get a background of the Titanic at the dock. You know, I took a uh, film, make, an online filmmaking class with him. And, uh, yeah, he's still he's still reeling from the cost of Rose's hat, you know, <laughs> and. And so, you know, films these days are costing $300 million, $400 million, $600 million to make. And the investors are doing it for one reason and one reason only, and that's to make money. So they do not want to take, um, they don't want to take any risks. So, you know, as much as I love, let's say, the Marvel movies, you know, what we're getting these days where films are really from the big movie houses are, you know, miscellaneous Marvel movie number 17. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what we can do with AI is to bring this technology, this, um, these characterizations, yeah. these scenes uh, into, into, the, into the purview of independent filmmakers. And I think that that's really, really what's what's amazing about this is unleashing the creativity of tens or hundreds of millions of people who can, you know, tell their story yeah. for the first time, which is, I think, pretty amazing. That's so awesome. And uh, Darian, let me ask you a little bit about your film, Emery, but what, in what inspired you to tell that story? Um, yeah, so so as many can see, and 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 yeah, I'm glad you guys got a chance to view it. 
as you many can see, the technology is is nascent. Um, and, you know, there, there are certain things that it can do. And then there are a lot of things it can't do quite yet. And so for me, I've been really going through the journey as a filmmaker to try to discover what can AI tell effectively as a story right now, right? So yes, I would love for it now to be able to do the Michael Bay circle cam and 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 control it exactly the way that I want to. But the reality is is that, you know, we, we've still got a lot of limitations to deal with as it as it grows and gets better. But at the same time, I'm not going to wait to tell stories. I want to tell stories now. All right. So um, what I wanted to think about basically was, you know, the idea of, um, you know, in this particular thing, if if people kind of caught that, is it's really from the point of view of of potentially somebody who is looking at their loved one or memories of their loved one. And that way, because they're looking at memories and it's a sort of maybe a virtual reality type of situation, it kind of embraces the fact that there's going to they're going to be imperfections in some of the imagery. And then, you know, when you see some of the images sort of breaking down and the computerized aspect to it, all of that's welcome. Right. Because we're dealing with a virtual memory. We're dealing with something that's maybe being generated by a computer for this person and something that may not be even an accurate representation of, you know, of this person's memories. So um, I wanted to be able to play with that. And I felt like AI was really well suited to be able to do that without me having to be too concerned about there being maybe some imperfections or distortion. These are the kinds of things we're fighting with now in AI filmmaking. And so I wanted to let that stuff bleed into, um, into the story. That's yeah, I think that's so cool in a way because we also watched earlier today another film, Infinity Eggs. And I think it's also like it used the imperfections of AI to tell the story, which I think as actors were like some of the actors are breathing a sigh of relief that like, okay, it's still, <laughs> um, but I, I think, yeah, I mean, I think there's always gonna be a place for for creatives and storytelling, but I think that's so interesting. Yeah, like you use the strengths of it to tell the story because I think so also it's interesting. I um I, I want to actually go to James too, but I just want to say as well, like I have tried to play around with some of the AI tools. So I want to actually ask you both what tools you specifically use, but I will say I spent like an hour, I was trying to generate a picture of something and it's quite challenging coming up with the prompts and also to get the faces to look the same. So yeah, I think would you like Darian, would you say like, how did you learn how to use the, the the technology to get the visuals that we see the cinematic look right because i've typed in some stuff and i'm like okay no and and so what tools first of all Darian, did you use on emory and then yeah how was that learning curve for you oh that's a really great question um and, and i think it does speak to the you know some of the concerns so a lot of the concerns that some people have said was that ai is coming and it's going to replace everybody's jobs and it's going to do all this and, you know, I, I, I'm of a different uh, kind of thought, I think more in the, in the side of, of abundance thinking. Um, and I think that AI will actually create more opportunities than it takes away. Um, and while there could potentially be some roles in the future that do, that might get uh, a little bit touched by it, I, I still think in the end, it's gonna be humans driving this storytelling media, medium. And so to answer your question, um, Everything that I've studied and, and learned and trained to do as a cinematographer and as a filmmaker really did help me to get that cinematic look quicker than I noticed that maybe a lot of other people may have struggled because it still uses language uh, to describe it. So because I'm aware of, you know, uh, cinematographers like Roger Deakins or Darius Kanji or, you know, Hoyta Fun Hoytema, I can reference these kinds of names that I've spent years and years studying, and I can say, hey, I'm looking to get a kind of a shot that's reminiscent to something that, you know, uh, Roger Deakins uh, might shoot. But then I, I want to combine that with, you know, uh, a concept or a feel from something like a true romance, you know? And so it's like, you know, true romance is from the 90s. Not everybody would necessarily be aware of that. And it's still me being the creative to put those two things together in a way that maybe another creative wouldn't think to combine these kinds of things, right? Um, my lens knowledge helps. So I can say, you know, give me like a, a, a wide angle lens, give me a 24 millimeter lens, give me backlighting, 
you know, give me atmospheric lighting, uh, bokeh, intense bokeh. So all that film language and things that we've always used on sets actually applies in in this in this term but specifically to the you asked about the tools yes. for emory i used i used uh mid journey to start with the images that were still images um mid journey is great at making wonderfully cinematic still images but then i needed to get those images moving so i took those images over into another ai tool called runway Our sponsor, um, I runway a, I, yes i believe runway is a sponsor um, I, and I love using Runway, uh, you know, so basically I can take images from Midjourney, put them into Runway, Runway will get those still images moving. Um, and then there's a lot of curation that I have to do. So I generate, I mean, for that one, one minute movie, I'm, I probably generated at least 500 clips, right? Before oh, I chose wow. the ones. Yeah, yeah. So how sure. long did that movie take you to make? I did make it quite fast because I've been doing I've been doing this for a good year and a half I would say, um, but uh, you know I spent I spent about two days on on that one minute movie right and a lot on the sound and right? I think you had a lot of timelines on the sound absolutely so yeah so moving to another sponsor of the festival Ava, Ava thank you so um, much so that Ava is going to be sponsoring two um two subscriptions to two winners today as well and and uh, runway not mid journey yet is sponsoring so runway is going to be sponsoring six um six six month subscriptions to some lucky winners um in in the in the festival so yeah we're really great that's pretty sponsors. that's pretty amazing I, and i think you said those were unlimited uh subscriptions right yeah I, yeah so the runway one is an unlimited six months 50, with 50k credits um so yeah we're yeah really i want that to uh, be i'm like can i yeah i mean <laughs> honestly yeah that that right there would be enough to really get somebody really well kick-started because um unlimited was actually a feature that i had suggested to runway and i'm sure a lot of other people did because before they used to have everything just on a credit basis and in my letter in my in my strongly worded letter to them i was saying that that if they wanted to compete with other um tools like mid journey or some of these other ones we needed the chance to be able to just explore so anybody who does get an unlimited subscription you will you won't be burning through all your credits just by trying things that don't work so like for me when i said i generated like 500 clips that would have only been possible with an unlimited subscription right. so that i could make a lot of mistakes right and then just just from there cherry pick the best ones um Amazing. yeah yeah, I'm going yeah. to be hitting you up for your prompts. Um, but yeah. James, let me let me circle back to you. So can you tell me a little bit about how the Cosmic Companion started? And maybe can you share a little bit with the audience about the Gaia Rising trailer? So as I understand, when is like that's going to be a film that you're releasing? But can you share a bit about the Cosmic Companion? What what inspired that and a bit about Gaia Rising and what you're trying to do with that? Sure, sure. Um, well, first of all, I grew up around scientists. My dad was a rocket scientist, so I literally grew up around the space program. And I was I spent a lot of time writing science articles. I probably wrote 10,000 uh, scientific articles. And, um, and so long story short, um, one of the stories I was writing was taking place just down the street from me back in 2019. So I went down to interview the scientists and I thought, wow, wow, this is really cool. I'd like to make a podcast out of this. And so it became a podcast. And then of course, COVID hit the world and everyone was on, no one was leaving their home and everyone was on Zoom. So I thought, wow, I can make a video show out of this podcast. <laughs> and so I started uh, creating, doing these weekly interviews with different scientists and researchers and authors around the globe. And I've always wanted to break down barriers to great science education. And I think yeah. that one of the biggest barriers is the idea that science is dry and boring. And so I tried having some fun with it, you know, making jokes and finding fun ways of doing things. And it just began to snowball. And now, you know, as I as I told as I told a scientist friend of mine the other day, you know, if I have to if 
if explaining thermodynamics means putting on a penguin suit and a top hat, I'm going to put on a penguin suit and a top hat. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. And so, you know, we know now that, um, that global climate change and global warming is maybe the most important issue of our time. Um, this could result in tens or hundreds of trillions of dollars in damage, the destruction of cities, the loss of, let's say, half of Florida uh, in the coming decades. And so I began to think, what, you know, there are all these great shows, all these great documentaries saying, well, if the temperature goes up by, you know, one and a half, two and a half degrees Celsius over the next 50 years, this may happen, that may happen. But I thought, okay, well, these are all in the future, thinking of, okay, how could this happen? You know, what might happen? So I thought, what if we turn this on its head? And I started to think of it as what would people a hundred years from now think about what happened in, you know, in their past. So it became, so I started rolling around this idea of a future history uh, told uh, in the year 2103 about about what's uh, about what happened with global warming and um, and how and I'm also and also storytelling is so important to the human race. It's part of what makes us humans, and um, and so I think it was so. Again, yeah. You know what this really needs is a real human story behind it, human connection, yes. disparate people coming together, um, redemption and challenges and, and what have you. And so the, so the character of Anna Luisa came to me fairly quickly, um, you know, who has everything before, you know, who's fairly wealthy, who has a name, who's famous and starts to lose everything because global warming is starting to, because flooding caused by global warming is starting to flood Manhattan. And, you know, meanwhile, we have Wadi over in Kenya, who's facing the exact opposite problem, which is a drought. It's taking away his farm and his family. And then we have Bill Sawyer out in, out in Wyoming, a climate change denier, who is forced to face up to the realities of climate change. And it's and Gaia Rising is really the human story of these three people who come together against the backdrop of a world in crisis. That's amazing. I think that something you just said, it actually made me realize that we're all storytellers. You know, human beings, we're all storytellers because it's so interesting to me that you come from a science background, but now you're basically a story, like you're filmmaking, right? And, and I think right. human beings, yeah, I don't think we need to be worried about AI or there's so many things you could worry about, right? Like being hit by a meteor, like wars, because you will always find a way to tell a story, even if we're like just sitting around a fireplace telling stories. And I think that's so cool. So I think with the AI tools, it's exciting because I know Darian, you shared with me, like there was a mom who was able to make a storybook for her kids. So I think also what I'm realizing, especially watching these two, is that they both made me feel something and made me think about something because I think we're also quite visual. I know I am. And what you said as well, I wish when I was in college, like we had, yeah, like sometimes if you're like climate change, I think some people are just like, they just zone out. But when you really show, um, you know, like, yeah, like showing what if, and I think you can do that with, with the AI tools, um, like hypothetically, um, it can be used like to educate or to inspire, to empower, or just make people think, like just make people think or make an impression on somebody. So I think that's really cool that you're getting your story out there. And I think it's obviously something close to your heart, but I think, yeah, when we can see it, that has a power to maybe like inspire somebody, evoke something in somebody because yeah, just reading from a textbook might not do that. So that's, I think we are storytellers and we like watching stories as well. So let me see, anybody in the audience have any questions for Darian Donju or James or anybody here like 
have any questions about AI tools? Yes, yes. I'm so sorry. This can be for both of us. I'm yes. Sorry. Do you want to introduce yourself? To oh, my name is Matua Basse. I'm just an attendee. Yes. <laughs> Who's um, asking the best questions today? <laughs> Yay for the attendees. <laughs> yeah, the most important people. Absolutely. I was wondering if you could maybe elaborate a little bit more about the limitations that you face having to use AI to do some of your storytelling and how that has impacted your creativity as Amazing, yeah. Um, so the, uh, if you, I'll repeat the question. Uh, if you can talk about, each of you can talk about some of the limitations that you faced using the AI tools, how that impacted your creativity and storytelling. Uh, Darian, would you like to go first and then James? Sure, absolutely. And this is a great, great question. Thanks for asking that. Um, so I, I think one of the things as a filmmaker that, that we've always had to come to terms with is limitations. Um, so one of the things that Natasha knows very well, that we've participated actively in quite a few 48-hour uh, film challenges. A few. And, right. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the fun of those is that it's kind of forcing you to work within the parameters that, that are given. And a lot of times the best creativity comes out of um, finding ways to still be able to tell your story within the time frames, within the parameters given, within limitations of location. Um, you know, I might want to tell something that's happening in a glacier, but because I live in Atlanta, it's very hard to access glaciers. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, that, that creates limitations that I kind of have to deal with, right? And somebody who lives in, in Iceland might, you know, have a different approach to that. Um, so we have always dealt with limitations, but specifically with AI, I think there's a different way of that we need to approach thinking uh, with the current state. And in a way, it's like we kind of think of our stories as um, story forward or visionary forward. And um, so, like, for example, I might come up with an idea. And then when I come up with that idea, I'll write a script or an outline Right, I'll have a very clear uh, storyboard or even an animatic about what's supposed to happen and a shot list that we would follow, right? With AI, we are not at the point yet that I could really, um, in a pleasurable way at least, try to continue that forward um, motion. I, I actually need to go into the story a bit, um, describe shots, describe imagery, describe scenes, and then see what I get out of the machine and essentially backwards from this machine, then sort of create the shot list or create the flow of the story. So it's a different approach. Um, it's a little bit more like when you're working with actors in an improv situation. So you're not giving the actors like a specific script or things to say, but you're just telling them, this is the general scenario, go, all <laughs> right? Uh, AI is very much like an improvisational actor at this stage like that. The actor is then going to give you what they give you. And then from there in the edit, I would go back and I would sort of piece together which bits are, are telling the story best. I think right now AI is that kind of, feels like that kind of improv, improvisational experience um, to me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, James, would you like to... Um, share your thoughts on that, on the limitations of AI that you faced and how that's affected your creativity. Sure. Um, first, I mean, you know, I think what, you know, a lot of people think, okay, well, AI in and of itself cannot produce, yet produce a really good film, uh, yeah. even a, even a, you There's know. There's a lot of nods from the audience right now. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but, but um, it may not be able to produce a great house yet, but it can produce bricks, incredible bricks by, by the thousands. And so as Daring was, and so it can create these amazing little pieces. And the yep. trick is putting them together in the right way and vetting which ones you want to use, which ones you don't want to use, create... And I think I'm right about in line with Darian. I probably produced two, three, 500 images, even for a short three or four minutes. You have the unlimited plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so um, what, it, what it does is uh, 
it allows us to all these different options. Do I want to put this brick here next to this brick? Do I want to, you know, line these clips up? Do I want, and I also, and so the real trick behind that is, I think, is to use traditional cinematic techniques. You know, do I want to fade this into this or do I want to do a blur? Do I, you know, this part, you know, I might have a great image where, you know, three quarters or 90% of it is fantastic. And then I just have this silly little spear or something, you know, where it shouldn't be. And so, you know, you fall back on the whole Ken Burns thing with panning and zooming and taking these still images and zooming over the parts that you want to use. And it can it can be used to a really, really dramatic effect. And, you know, you combine that with, you know, soundtrack. Um, I recently did a short film called Pandora Redux, which is a uh, one minute comedic retelling of the original Pandora story. And, you know, just as she opens the jar, releases the spirits, the music oh, comes no, towards the And, um, and so you can really, I think there's a wonderful, wonderful ideal of using this syncretic sort of blend of new AI technologies with older technologies and trusted film techniques to really come up with something that can be special. That's amazing. Yeah, I think, I, I don't feel it has to be either or. You know, I think a lot of filmmakers, I can totally understand the fear, like, oh my gosh, is it gonna be? But I, I think it can be and, you know, AI and. Right. I think for actors as well, like I think, you know, to be honest, we used AI to design our festival graphic. It took us a long right. time <laughs> to the prompts. Yep. But I used something the other day to make a little um, clip. So I think it's like, okay, how can we use this and like to help us? But that's really cool. Let me see. Anybody else in the audience have any thoughts, comments? Yes, you want to introduce yes. yourself? No, sorry. Hi, my name is Johan. My question is, as an AI storyteller, um, how do you convey connection and, um, mm. and what's the word, feeling towards the story for, for a viewer? Because as a viewer, I'm still struggling to connect and to get a sort of feeling out of the story. It's very flat at the moment. You know? I'm not connected to it. Uh, is there a way of how that can maybe uh, progress in the future or? You know? Good question. Um, did you guys hear the question and maybe who wants to go first? Okay, Darian, you're nodding. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I could jump in quick and then uh, we can... Um... So this is um, so one thing I would say is that the technology is moving faster than uh, any technology that I've ever seen move. So like, for example, right. and it's not that I'm just plugging the sponsor, but, the, you know, one of the sponsors, Runway, just came out with an update. Thank you, Runway. This week, right? Thank you, Runway. Just came out. <laughs> Thank you, Runway. They just came out with an update earlier this week, you know, that, you know, everything that I've been doing before almost seems like ancient history because mm. the quality has gone up, the, uh, the, the, the more fidelity towards the prompts that you're giving has gone way up. So I've started testing that already and I'm already blown away. And it's the same with, with all the tools like Mid Journey, for example, the, the imagery keeps getting better. Um, and, and so I think, um, I think the answer to the question is one, the tools keep on moving and they're just gonna keep getting better. And two, it's going to be about the humans, right? So it's really us. We're the ones that AI is never going to pour in that emotional connection uh, for us. But that's really where we come in. I, I try, and I know we have a long way to go. I do a lot with sound design. So um, in Emory specifically, um, you know, most of the work that I did was actually almost all sound design because I you know, I, I put together the imagery and I and I edited it and that was maybe two tracks, let's say, in my timeline. And the sound design was about 12 tracks, right? So there there's so many layers of sounds going on, breathing, water sounds, all of these things. And that's because I was looking for a way to be able to evoke emotion, you know, using audio and things like that to trigger memories or to trigger feelings in people. 
So um, I think it's it's going to come down to the human element and what we really try to put into it to um, to do that. Real quick, Natasha, I just wanted to say um, if you later uh, we, I produce some questions. If you still want to do some kind of a of a quick uh, demo, or something I, I yeah, can do that. Quick. Yeah. If you have it open, yeah, we can just show them like what the timeline looks like or something. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, and James, do, would you like to share your thoughts on that? Like how how do you create connection using the AI tools? Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think that um, oh, it's a great question. Um, but I think that connecting, developing a film that lets people connect with the characters may actually be largely independent of a medium mm. in this in the sense that you know you could have a you know live action film um but if the storytelling isn't there if the character development isn't there you're not going to connect and you know i've watched probably too many films that uh that uh, i won't name them uh <laughs> that you just you know really cannot connect with the characters yet i'm probably after 30 years i'm probably feeling pretty at home with the Simpsons, which is an animation. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so I think point. I think I think the connection really comes in the storytelling and in the character development. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's up to the humans yeah. then to figure out how to create connection um and evoke emotion using the tools, right? Because we're the ones who are gonna be programming it. That's really cool. Um, so let's see, let's maybe do a little speed round and then maybe, yeah, like, let's see if we can do a, um, a screen share quickly, but speed round, favorite movie, Darian. I'm going to go with Ex Machina since I'm being pressed on a speed round. Ex Machina awesome. is the one for me. I know it's an AI. I feel like it show, changed but I, the podcast. I thought it was great. <laughs> uh, it always changes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And, and James, favorite movie. If I had to pick one, probably Pulp Fiction. Okay. As old mm. as it is, Samuel L. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, and no, I want to change my movie. Okay, everything, okay, you can go every, for it. Everything, everywhere, oh, all at once. That, there you that's go. my favorite movie. There you go. All right, awesome. I mean, we can watch human films and AI films. <laughs> so let's see. Um, Darian, complete the sentence. AI is. A lot of people are thinking opportunity, oh. opportunity for everyone. Awesome, awesome. I feel like you may as well look at it that way because otherwise it's like, <laughs> yeah, just empower yourself. James, AI is the greatest advance in filmmaking since the invention of the movie camera. Damn, I love that. All right, <laughs> awesome. Um, and what would you say to like maybe actors or filmmakers that are like shit scared of? Like, <laughs> yeah, Darian, uh, and then James. Um, I would say, you know, go. I think James started. Go ahead, James, and I'll yes, follow. Yes, James. Oh, no, no. Um, Are you going to be replaced I, by I, AI? I think, I, think, I think that a lot of fear, um, not only about AI, but about everything, can often, often stems from a lack of knowledge. We're scared and, of everything, let's be honest. Human. And I don't mean that in any sort of derogatory way, but you know, I think you find like, let's say, you know, I think you find that you know, the more you learn about how artificial intelligence actually works, the less you're afraid of of the dangers that a lot of people, you know, present uh, about the subject. That's really profound because I think sometimes we're afraid of even people different from us. Um, Absolutely. You know, we're, we're not, we have yeah. a lack of knowledge. We can't relate. And I think that's so true. Like, I, that's really beautiful, actually, what you said. It's like just maybe a lack of knowledge and the fear of change. Yeah. Thank you so much. James, were you going to say something else? I think I cut you off. Oh, I, I was just going to say, you know, this might age me a little bit, but the, um, the first class I ever took outside of school, I was, I think, seven years old, and it was a photography course. And I remember the first day we went in, uh, the teacher talked about how some people say that photography is not art. 
And, you know, and I, you know, they think, you know, they're saying, oh, a lot of people think, you know, you just click the picture, you know, click the picture and it's done, you know, but when you take a look at the incredible photography, it's done, but was done by Ansel Adams, Annie Galipovitz, and, you know, these fantastic photographers, there's no way of denying that that is art. And, um, and it's the same thing now with AI. Oh, you just write the prompt, but as you said, Natasha, writing a prompt isn't so easy. It's not, trust me. I, <laughs> not I tried good. and I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're writing, you know, 500 of them and, uh, <laughs> and trying to get, you know, just the right look and just the right style. Um, like I have a master's and I couldn't like get one picture out, like how to tell Jacques to help. So yeah, it's a skill. Yeah. And, um, and so I think I think that like photography in the early in you know a while ago, um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about how it's done, and I think addressing those misunderstandings and helping people learn and educate them about AI is is a really good going to be a really good thing for all. That's so awesome, and I I think as well it's so beautiful what you're doing to kind of just make people think about climate change and the future and. Yeah, like how we can maybe change like now or just kind of, I don't know, just make people think or bring awareness to something like this. That's really great. Um, Darian, would you like to say anything? Oh, yeah. So and, and and the question was about to the people who are afraid that it might replace them. Is that the question? Yeah, yes, exactly. That we're just going to use AI to make movies and less actors will be needed or less filmmakers, less crew. Right. So, 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 and I kind of, kind of reference scarcity thinking versus abundance thinking. And um, so the way I look at it is that, let's say the traditional way of making films, we, we think of Hollywood or we think of like, you know, uh, traditional studios making films and, and that's the only opportunity. But I think the, the, the abundance side of it says that more, the more people are able to start telling stories is the more people can be included in those stories. And so, you know, you, you know, as well as I do, a lot of, there are a lot of actors, for example, who have stories to tell, like just because they're actors and they, they, they aren't, haven't been billed as a writer or a director doesn't mean they don't have ideas about that. And I think these tools may be able to empower more of the creators who felt like they had to be pigeonholed into one area or another and not be able to cross streams or else risk you know, not being taken seriously in their field. Like, it's almost like you, you've you got to just say that you're an actor or else somebody will feel threatened, right? That you want to take their job. So we've been trained to say, we just do this one thing. But maybe we're moving into a new era where people can explore more of their uh, ability. You know, I know, for example, that you, Natasha, have a lot of stories to tell and have started to be able to do that. And I think these these tools will help people be less intimidated um, for example, if you're looking for a monologue, uh, you know, you could maybe generate one. Maybe, maybe there's not a monologue that fits the type of character that you would like to express. So maybe you could create one that is tailored to something that a role that you really wanted to play. Right. Or if you're scared of, well, oh, it's so hard to storyboard or it's so hard to do a shot list. Right. You could use these like chat GPT or these other kinds of tools to bridge the gap, you know, um, even even a lot of the words that I mentioned with cinematography and things like that, I think we are moving into um, an area where that will be less necessary. So that when you start to prompt for images, you won't need to really even know all these um, filmmakers or, or any of that stuff. So that a truck driver, for example, who only has maybe weekends, but really does want to tell a story, could actually work on a story in the weekends and realistically get something out there, which will then create more opportunities, more things for us to watch and, and grow the industry, honestly. Yeah, that's really great. And I'm also thinking it sounds like, especially during COVID, like this was something that people could use to make movies when they might have other constrictions. But thank you both for sharing. Any last questions from the audience? There was a hand, no? Okay, great. Um, let's see, we are kind of nearing the end, but I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. if you have it open, um, should we do a- Yes, I could- share? Yeah, I, I, the reason I want to do this particular um, this particular share is because, um, like we mentioned, um, these tools are getting um, better and better, and things are changing very, very fast. 
can people see this screen already or no? Oh, uh, wait, yeah. no, give me a second. Oh, it. how is he already sharing? What? How did you do that? Yep. Oh. I was ready. AI. <laughs> AI. No, no. This is like the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, so this is this is this is this is, not, this is this is a completely in a way unprepared demo, just because I want everybody to feel that this can be a lot easier than some people may think that it is. And also to show how even Natasha, what you mentioned about the prompting with Midjourney, there have been some updates to Chat GPT. Yes that happened this week. So this is what I'm about to show you is, is new, new, new. And it, it's, a, it's the situation that can get you um, to understand that anyone now can get to the point where they could tell stories, right? So what I might do, for example, is I might say to ChatGPT without any special language, just say, um, write me a short script in screenplay format about a film festival, and it doesn't matter if I'm, I'm misspelling some things, but it, it won't matter. A film festival happening right now in Cape Town. Oh, that would be Black Mirror. That would be Black Mirror. Well, the actors would be like, oh, hey. Right? And so here's what it's doing now. It is taking that idea and it is immediately it's called shadows in the cape it's got the correct format shadows that's super dark <laughs> yeah now we're going it probably knows me it knows i write, I write dark stuff so it's like you know darren will like this if it's dark we but we've got a couple... to design our programs yesterday we type those whole things up <laughs> and we've got you know so the reason i'm pointing this out is that is like i know one of the things that kind of prevents people from like really getting their ideas out there is they're afraid of screen screenplay format. Mm. And so this is something that can help with that. Right. And then, um, and I won't do it right now, but uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a slave to this output. I could actually read right. through the script and then I could say to it, Oh, you know what? Uh, I want it to go more in this direction or go more in that direction. And all I would do is type that in and say it, but real quick, just for the demo, I would say now, let's say I'm happy with the script. I would basically say, um, give me a formatted shot list of this script, right? So a shot list is another thing that is very intimidating for a lot of new filmmakers. They're very Did concerned about one? like- <laughs> I, <laughs> I could have used this on a few films. Yeah, and here it is. It's, it's saying that we're gonna start with shot one, which is a wide shot of the festival main hall. It's gonna to go to shot two, a medium shot of Martin and Jade having a conversation, showing their expressions. Then it goes to two close-ups. And, and I'll tell you right now, from a filmmaking perspective, this is a very, um, this is a very known way of going into a shot. So it, it has knowledge of the proper way of doing these things. And then I can always go in and change these things. But as Natasha knows, it takes a, usually takes us a long time to produce this kind of a shot list or never, because we run out of time and then we just have to wing it or whatever like that. And then the last thing I quickly want to do is I want to say, we'll see if this is work, because this works, because I, like I said, it's not a prepared demo, but I'll say, give, I'm going to say, draw me some storyboard images of the key shots from the shot list. And I we'll see if this works, but I'm hoping I'm hoping it will work. So now it's changing to the mode of creating images because the announcement that happened this week is that they've integrated a lot of these different tools. So Dolly 3 is like Midjourney; It is an image generator. And so, it, you know, now you can generate these images, but you don't need to use the Midjourney sort of like formatting where, you know, you had to do forward slash imagine and then know these different words, right? So as you can uh, see here, what it's, it's generated nice. for us, Yes. So here you go. There's the wide angle that it mentioned in, in the oh, first I feel like thing. I should have sent this to the sponsors. Like. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that was, I just wanted to do that quick demo. Uh, obviously, it. It, you know, I could spend a lot more time and I could push it and say, give me some different things or whatever like that. But it really is that fast nowadays to be able to do that. And, and this should not be something that's scary. This should be something that's empowering because those of us who've been working in the film industry know that 
a lot of times it's about budget, whether you could even make a storyboard, right? And you don't have the budget to hire someone. You don't have the budget to do a mood board or any of these proper formatting things. So now if you're just a regular person with a great story to tell, you have tools that can support you in that. And you can still be a very professional about it without feeling like the tool is like taking over your life. You, it's actually empowering you to do a better job on film. So that's that's the short demo. This is so cool. And what's like kind of uh, amazing but creepy is it has Table Mountain and Lion's Head, like two well-known mountains in the background. I'm mm. like, this looks amazing. But thank you so much for sharing. I think it's exciting and uh, honestly, it's fun. Like if somebody just wants to play around and create something, whether a film- And it's fun. Not, <laughs> yeah. Just make it, you know, that's so awesome. Um, before we close out, thank you so much, both of you for being here. And where can people find you if they want to see your work? whether it's um, AI films or films or whatever your projects are. So um, yeah, if you could share maybe your Instagram or your YouTube, but yeah, where can people find you if they want to follow what you're doing next? You want to go for you it, James? Start? All right. Um, the Cosmic Companion is at, you can be found at the Cosmic Companion dot anything, uh, dot, dot com, dot net, dot TV. You own the domain. Uh, yeah. And, um, and of course, um, out on YouTube is, Everyone is to search for the Cosmic Companion, um, and we try, and it's also we also have a newsletter uh, at thecosmiccompanion.com. You can sign up; there are free plans, and we'll just send you out uh, everything that we do and give you a fine how to do once in a while. That's so awesome! Thanks, James, and it was so awesome to have you here, Larry. And where can people find you? Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm at Darian Donju on all platforms. So it's at D A R I O N Darian like Marion, and then Donju D A N J O U uh, for social media. It doesn't uh, allow the apostrophe. So Darian Donju on Instagram. Everybody can reach out to me at any time. Uh, my YouTube is also under my name. Uh, Twitter. Um, I'm very excited for anybody to reach out if you have questions or if you have opportunities. Uh, either way, uh, reach out to me and I'm, I'm always glad to collaborate and connect with people who are excited about movie making. Awesome. This is so exciting. And also, like, it seems like we have a, a resolution on the strike. So, yeah, we're all excited to get back to work. But thank you both for your time. It was really great to have you here with us. And thank you, the audience, for your questions. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the festival. Yay. Have fun. All right. I love Zoom.